Good morning, OCM. Good morning. Good morning. How are y'all today? Good. good. It's so good to have you here. Would you stand and let's worship because today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Listen, friends, to what it says in Psalm 149. It says, praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise in the assembly of his faithful people. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the people of Zion be glad in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing and make music to him with temporal and harp. For the Lord takes delight in his people. Then it ends this, this chapter by saying this. It is the, it, to this is the glory of all the faithful people. The glory of all the faithful people, praise the Lord. We've come in here to this place this morning to worship Jesus Christ. So we hope that you're ready, that in the moments that you got up this morning, that your heart is prepared to, to worship the maker, the God who created you, the God who gave you life, the God who's brought you salvation through Jesus Christ. 
That is what our time here today is all about. It's about worshiping our Lord. May we celebrate him today. Let's worship him. You are the word at the beginning, one with God, the Lord most high, hidden glory in creation, now revealed in you, our Christ, what a beautiful name it is, what a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. Didn't want heaven without us. So
have a seat. About a couple years ago, um, on Tuesdays, I started hanging out over at Kinder Elementary School uh, just to hang out with some of their students there as part of the mentoring program that uh, was started back a couple years ago. And uh, over the last couple years, I've had the privilege of really sitting in that lunchtime with a little boy. I won't tell you his name, uh, but uh, he is a wonderful little kid that I get to hang out with on Tuesday afternoons. So it's been kind of cool over the last few years to sit with him and uh, color, play games, um, and just enjoy some time of getting to know him and his life situation. A few weeks ago, I brought the game Mancala. Now, if you know anything about Mancala, it's an old African game, and what you do is you try to get your, your Mancala emptied. And so we were playing the game Mancala, and I had kind of built up a spot in my my repertoire, if you want to use that word, that had a lot of stones in it. Well, this little guy was watching me the entire time, and I thought that I had him basically, like, beat, 
I was like, oh yeah, here we go. I'm going to win another game. Well, unbeknownst to me, my little friend had been watching me play my guys the entire time to the point where he had stacked up enough stones on his side of the Mancala board that put me in a place that basically I lost. <laughs> I mean, to be honest with you, my little friend, like, he kicked my tail, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> All right? And I remember saying to my friend, man, I cannot believe you won. He's like, Mr. RW, I've been watching you. <laughs> I tell you that story to tell you this. You know, it'd be so easy for me on a Tuesday to just do my lunch in my office like I normally do and get back to the nitty gritty of, of things that I do on a weekly basis or daily basis in my office. But the time that I spend with my little friend has become not just important for me, it's become important for him. And I'll never forget a few weeks ago, this was after the Man College game, I brought in this Lego box. And I'd forgotten to bring a game, so I went down to Joy's classroom and just grabbed her box of Legos. And the smile on my friend's face when he had those Legos to play with after we ate lunch was like a mile wide. Friends, I know, I know that time is precious. And I know that your time is the most precious thing you have. And I know that school's getting ready to get done here in Miamisburg, but I'm going to challenge us in this way as we get through summer and start to think about what happens in the fall. That if there's a kid in your neighborhood that you can, like, just invest in, take the opportunity to do that. I, I, I know you might be, it might be, it'll feel weird for you, but let me tell you, the kids that I come in contact with in our community that I hear, or I just hang out with every once in a while, they need to experience some love in their life, if you know what I'm saying. They just need to experience it. And I think we as Christ followers, if we get really intentional about spending some time with people that really need to experience that love, that it's gonna do incredible things, not just for us and not just for them, but for the kingdom purposes. That's what it's all about, right? I mean, Jesus told us to love one another. And yes, that means us as a body of the family of Christ, but it means to love those who don't know him yet too. So may we be challenged to use our time to invest in the lives of those around us who really need it. Let's worship our Lord today. Would you stand as we continue to worship? I search the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise and treasures of faith are never enough. Then you came along.
campus, we, um, we just want to say thank you for coming into this world, a world that was corrupt, a world that was full of sin, a world that was messed up. We thank you, Jesus, for coming into this world for the express purpose of saving our lives. We thank you, God, for giving up your splendor. We thank you, Jesus, for giving up your majesty, for leaving the place of honor right beside the Father and choosing to make your dwelling with a bunch of people who needed to find a way back to God. Jesus, we thank you that you took the cross. That was a cross that, honestly, Jesus, we should have been the ones to take. We should have been the ones who were nailed to that, that tree. But you so willingly took our place. Jesus, I love the, the phrase of that song that says, doesn't matter how much I've faltered or failed, you still call me friend. Just as overwhelming that you still call us friend, no matter how messed up, no matter how broken, no matter how just, just far out and right, left, or center field we are from you, you call us friend. You look at us, you love us for who we are, you welcome us into your family, you adopt us, you redeem us, you save us, thank you. Jesus, I know that there are people here in this room, I know that there are people who are watching online who really need you to show up in a big way today. Maybe, maybe this week has been a stressful week for them. Maybe the last couple hours have been stressful for them. Would you somehow, some way, remind them, number one, of how much you love them, how much you care for them? Number two, how present you are in the midst of the situation. Jesus, today as we begin to look at the helper that you promised, the Holy Spirit, the ghost. Would you help us to understand what he's all about, who he is? Would you help us to use your word to connect in a powerful way some dots that maybe have never been connected before? So God, as we quiet ourselves to hear from your word, we ask that the words you've inspired Pastor Daniel to speak to us today would be ones that challenge us to think outside the box of who the Holy Spirit is. Maybe we came into this place and we thought, eh, we know about the Holy Spirit. Would we come out of this place with a different understanding just because of what's said today? God, lastly, would you be in the places around this community that are gathering for you, that are gathering to worship with you, whether it's the Wesleyan Church, whether it's the Nazarene up, up on the hill, God, whether it's over at St. James, whether it's St. John's Lutheran, whether it's the greenhouse. God, with the places where people are gathered to worship you today, would they sense your Holy Spirit's presence in a powerful way, just like we're experiencing right here. We praise you today, Jesus. We worship you today, Jesus. Amen. Amen. In church, it is. It's so good to worship God with you, uh, together with you this morning. You know that that line that we just sang about there is nothing better than you. But what a great reminder each Sunday when we come to worship that there truly is nothing better than God in all of our life. Hey, I want to I want I want to make a suggestion this morning, and I think I think that you'll agree with it. But I want to suggest I want to suggest that all of life is learning. That from the moment we're born into this world. Our lives are filled with learning to do new things. Learning to roll over, learning to crawl, learning to, uh, to walk, eventually learning to talk. 
And, and then, then as we get older, learning to, do, learning to do other things, learning to do more complicated things, learning algebra and physics, learning how to drive, learning how to work a first job, learning how to budget our money, learning how to cook something other than ramen noodles or fish sticks. <laughs> that's, what, that's what my dad lived on until he got married. <laughs> Um, learning how to put the toilet seat down. That's an important one. <laughs> learning how to parent children. All of life is learning. And all of us need teachers. We need teachers to teach us those different things that we learn throughout life. When I was a kid growing up, my first teachers were my parents. And, and, and yeah, they were my first teachers in terms of teaching me to walk and, and eat and ride a bike, all those things that parents do. But they were, they were also my teachers in school. Uh, I was homeschooled from kindergarten all the way up through 12th grade. And so my parents were also my first teachers in school. My mom taught all of our English and language arts classes because she was, a, she was a language major in college. And then my dad was an engineer. And so when he got home from work, he would help out with math or science, whatever we were getting stuck on in those subjects. When I got to college, I worked as a resident assistant for a couple years. Uh, that is, that's me all the way over on the left in this picture. And that's actually Sarah in the middle. Uh, you can just see her face sticking out there, but that's Sarah with the blonde hair right in the middle. Um, and being an RA was a great experience for me. Uh, we had a fantastic team of resident assistants, and we had a lot of fun working together with one another while also welcoming new students to the university and helping them build connections. And I'm still really good friends. I'm still really good friends with several of the people in this picture. Even the guy, even the guy right there in the front whose shorts are way too short. He was in my wedding and I was in his. <laughs> but the guy, the guy right in front of Sarah, if you look right in the middle of the picture here, the guy right in front of Sarah, his name is Jose Torres, and he was the resident director. He was the boss for our team of resident assistants. He worked as a youth pastor before he became an RD, um, and he's actually serving as a youth pastor again now. And, and a lot of what I have learned, a lot of what I personally have learned about working with young adults and students in ministry comes from him, comes from Jose. He's been a fantastic mentor and teacher for me. In fact, one of the biggest lessons, one of the biggest lessons that Jose taught me while I was an RA was what to do when things don't go the way that I expected, when things didn't go the way that I had planned. Pretty early on, pretty early on in my time serving as an RA, Jose realized, he noticed, that when something didn't go the way I hoped or the way I planned, I immediately jumped to the worst case scenario. When something unexpected happened, I immediately started playing the what if game. Instead of taking a deep breath, evaluating the scenario, figuring out what changes needed to be made, I would just jump straight to, well, if this happens, and then this happens, and then this, guys, this is gonna be a major problem. This is gonna, this is, this is, this is gonna be a, 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 a nine alarm fire. This is gonna be a big deal. And Jose pointed out this flaw in my leadership and taught me that what I needed to do, instead of jumping straight to the worst case scenario, was to take a deep breath and evaluate what was going on and figure out what changes needed to be made rather than immediately jumping to the worst case scenario. And I'm really glad that Jose did that. Um, you know, if you ask me to list my strengths right now, I probably would still not list flexibility or adapting to change um, as a natural strength of mine, as, as one, of my, one of my strongest strengths. But I can tell you that I've grown by leaps and bounds in that area of my life, thanks to having someone who took the time to point out a place where I needed to grow and then helped me learn how to grow in that area. And so, all of us need teachers and mentors to help us learn. All of us need teachers, just like Jose did for me. All of us need teachers to give us guidance in life. And today we're starting a new series. Today we're starting a new series called Ghost. And over the course of the next five weeks, we're going to be taking a deep dive into learning more about the Holy Spirit, learning more about the Holy Ghost. And we'll be focusing on discovering who the Holy Spirit is and how the Spirit is at work in our lives if we follow Jesus. Each week we'll be looking at a different facet, a different aspect of the Holy Spirit's nature and how he works in the lives of believers. And here's the big point for this morning. Here's, here's the big takeaway for this morning. The Holy Spirit teaches us a new way of life. 
All of us need teachers in life. We need teachers to teach us all the ordinary things that we just talked about a couple of minutes ago. But when we accept the forgiveness that God offers us through the death and resurrection of Jesus, and we choose to place our trust in Jesus and follow him, then we're welcomed into a whole new, brand new way of life. You know, the Bible says that if anyone is in Christ, let me, let me give you a couple examples of this just straight from the Bible. The Bible says that if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has gone, the new has gone, come. That's 2 Corinthians 5.17. The Bible also says this. This is in Ephesians 2, 4, and 5. It says, because of his great love for us, God, who's rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. He made us alive even when we were dead in our transgressions. We're made into a new creation. We're made alive even when we were dead. When we choose to believe in Jesus and put our trust in him, we're brought from death to life. It's not only that God forgives our sin. It's not only that God forgives our sin and makes us blameless in his sight, but it's that God also gives us a brand new abundant life. You know, Jesus says in John 10, 10, he says, I've come that they may have life, that those who follow me, that those who believe in me may have life and have it to the full. In other words, God offers us abundant, overflowing, never-ending, eternal life when we believe in Jesus through his death and resurrection from the cross. That's what Jesus has won for us on the cross and by rising from the grave. And the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the one who teaches us how to live in this new life that Jesus offers to us. The Holy Spirit teaches us a new way of life. So turn with me to John chapter 14. We're going to go to John chapter 14, verses 15 through 27, and we're going to spend some time looking together at exactly how the Holy Spirit teaches us to live this new way of life. And we're going to do things a little bit differently. We're going to do things a little bit differently this morning. Instead of reading a little bit of the passage and talking about it, and then a little bit more, and then talking about it, we're actually just going to read through the whole passage first, and then we're going to spend some time afterwards diving into everything that's contained in this passage. So here we go, John chapter 14, starting with verse 15. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. This is Jesus speaking. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, But Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? And Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives. Don't let your hearts be troubled, and don't be afraid. Wow, there was, there was a lot in those 13 verses, right? There was a lot in what we just read. You know, when I, when I was reading over this passage earlier in the week to get ready for the sermon, I, I, I almost felt like I needed to get out a whiteboard. I almost felt like I needed to grab a whiteboard, pull it down off my wall, and start diagramming everything that was going on in the passage. If this, then that. If not this, then not that. You will, they will not. Almost, almost like drawing up football plays with the different arrows and lines and everything. You know, like, this guy's running a post, this guy's running a wheel route. Okay, not, not, not really, but I almost felt like I needed to get a whiteboard out and start drawing all over it, like I was drawing up plays for, for a sports event. And while I didn't end up doing that, while I did not end up doing that, what I did realize, what I did realize is that there's five primary actors, there's five primary characters listed in the passage. Jesus talks about God the Father, he talks about himself, 
He talks about the Holy Spirit. He talks about followers of Jesus and about the world. And so what I ended up doing is I did get a whiteboard. I, I did get the whiteboard out of the youth room. And across the top of it, I wrote God the Father, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, believers, and the world. And then under each of these different headings, I wrote down what Jesus said about each of these different people or groups of people. And as I did so, as I did that, it really helped me to organize and clarify everything that Jesus talked about in this passage. And so what I want to share with you this morning, what I want to share with you is what I wrote down, because I believe that what I wrote down, just like it was helpful to me, is also going to be helpful to you guys. So here we go. We're not going to take too much time. We're going to go through this kind of quick, but check this out. Here's, here's everything that Jesus just said in all that we read. Here we go. Starting with God the Father. He said that God the Father is the one who sends the Holy Spirit. He says that the Father loves those who, lo uh, who follow Jesus, and that God the Father will come and make his home with them. And so first and foremost, I want you to see that the Holy Spirit comes from God the Father. The Father sends the Holy Spirit to all who put their trust in him through Jesus. And then Jesus also talks about himself. He tells the disciples that he'll ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit, that the Father will send the Holy Spirit in his name, and that he will not leave the disciples as orphans, but he'll come to them. He tells the disciples that if they obey his commands, he'll love them and will make his home with them. Jesus says that he's in the Father, that we are in him, and that he is in us. He says that he will live, and because he lives, that those who believe in him will also have life. And then last but not least, Jesus promises to give his peace to those who believe in him and reminds the disciples that he does not give as the world gives. And then Jesus talks about the Holy Spirit. He says that the Holy Spirit is a counselor or an advocate, depending on what translation you're reading, and that this Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth who will be with us, who will be with believers in Jesus forever. He says that the Holy Spirit will live in all those who follow Jesus and that the Holy Spirit will both teach us all things and remind us of all that Jesus has said. Jesus talks about those who believe in him, those who follow him. He says that if we love him, we'll obey his commands. He says that we will know and recognize the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit will live in us. He says that we'll see him, that we will see Jesus, and that we will live because Jesus lives. He says that we are in him, that we are loved by Jesus and the Father, and that he and the Father will come to make their home with us. And finally, he says that we're given the peace of Christ and we don't have to be troubled or afraid. Whew, there, there is a lot there. Even just on this one slide, there is a lot there, right? That is a lot of good news for us. And then finally, Jesus also talks about the world, about those who don't follow Jesus. He says that the world cannot accept the Holy Spirit. He says that ultimately the world cannot even see or know the Holy Spirit. And then he goes on to say that the world will not be able to see Jesus, that the world does not love him, and that the world will not obey his teaching. So here's everything that we just talked about. And I know it's tiny. I know that the font is really tiny, and especially if you're watching online, I can almost guarantee that there's no way that you can read all of that. But I wanted to show you everything. I wanted to show you everything that Jesus talked about just in these few verses. You know, can you, can you imagine being the disciples when Jesus was saying all of this? Think, think about this. Don't, don't worry about what's up on here. Don't worry about trying to read all this little stuff. But just imagine being the disciples when Jesus was saying all of this. That they must have been racking their brains trying to remember everything that Jesus had just said. You know, I, I kind of wonder if any of them, I kind of wonder if one of them was sitting there taking notes, just trying to keep track of everything. You know, hey, 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 James, did you catch that? I don't know, John, John did you hear what he said about who was in who? Uh, Peter, did you, who's coming to make their home with us? Matthew, are, are you taking the notes? Are you getting everything? I mean, no wonder, no wonder that Judas asked Jesus why he would show himself to the disciples, but not to the world. That must have just been one, that must have been only one of the many questions that were popping up in their minds as Jesus was saying all this. But check this out, check this out. Here's the most important part, here's the most important thing of everything that Jesus said in this passage. Look at what Jesus says in the second half of verse 24. Here's what he says. He says, these words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. 
Jesus is not just blowing hot air. He's not just making things up off the cuff. Everything that Jesus says in this passage, everything that we just talked about, is straight from the Father. All that Jesus is teaching is from God. It's true. All that we just wrote down about what God the Father does, about what Jesus does, about how the Holy Spirit works, and who we are as believers in Jesus is true. It's the word of God. And that's great news for us. That is great news for each of us. So what do we do with all this? It's a lot. What do we do with all of it? What does this mean for who the Holy Spirit is, how he works in our lives, and how we should respond to God? Well, let me give you three things. Let me give you three quick things that I think that we can take away from this passage. Here's the first one. The Holy Spirit connects us to Jesus and to God the Father. When we put up that chart a couple of minutes ago, there, was a, there were a ton of connections on it. Jesus is in the Father. We are in Jesus. He is in us. Jesus and God the Father will come to make their home with us. Jesus will not leave us as orphans, but will come to us. There were a ton of different connections. And all of those connections are made possible by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a connector. He's the Spirit of God, and he connects us with Jesus and God the Father. When Jesus says that God will send the Holy Spirit as a counselor to those who love him and obey his commands, he's promising that even after his resurrection and ascension to heaven, that he will not leave us alone. Instead, God sends his spirit to dwell in all who love Jesus and obey his commands. The spirit of God, God's spirit, literally comes to dwell with our spirit. Jesus and the Father come to make their home with you and with me through the Holy Spirit. And rather than leaving us as orphans trying to follow God by our own strength, God sends the Holy Spirit to dwell in our hearts and to give us the power to follow and obey him. We can do all things through his strength. We can do all things through the strength of the Holy Spirit in us. And Jesus also gives his peace to the disciples through the Holy Spirit. We can have the peace of God in our hearts because we have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. We are in Jesus, and Jesus is in us through the Holy Spirit. All of the ways that we are connected to the Father and the Son are made possible through the presence of the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. Through the Holy Spirit, we are connected to God because we have God's very Spirit dwelling in us. But not only not only do we have the presence and peace of God dwelling in us through the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit also, the Holy Spirit also continues the ministry of Jesus through us. This is the second point. The Holy Spirit connects us to Jesus and God the Father, and then the Holy Spirit also continues the ministry of Jesus through us. Look at verse 26 one more time. If you still got your Bible open, look at verse 26. Jesus says this. He says, the counselor or the advocate, the Holy Spirit, who the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things, and will remind you of everything I have said. In other words, the Holy Spirit continues what Jesus has started. The Holy Spirit both reminds us of what Jesus has said, and also helps us to understand what God is teaching in the Bible. The Spirit both reminds us of the truth, and explains the truth to us. And you know, I, I, wonder, if the apostle, I wonder if the Apostle John got chills as he was writing this passage. I've never thought of this before, but as I was working on this this week, I thought, I wonder if the Apostle John got chills as he was writing this passage. And here's what I mean. Here's what I mean. Uh, stick with me here. Each of the Gospels was written well after Jesus had died on the cross, rose from the grave, and ascended into heaven. As, as the good news about Jesus spread to new areas where people had not heard about Jesus before, and as more and more people who'd been firsthand witnesses of Jesus began to pass away, the Gospels were written down to pass on the story of Jesus to those who had not witnessed it firsthand, to pass on the story of Jesus to another generation, either those living in areas where they had not heard of Jesus before or those who had been born after the events of Jesus' lifetime. And so most biblical scholars, most biblical scholars actually believe that the Gospel of John was likely the final Gospel to be written, that John was probably the final one who wrote down his Gospel, and that it was possibly as much as 50 or more years after Jesus rose from the dead 
and ascended to heaven. And so 50 years after Jesus rose from the grave and went to heaven, John is sitting there trying to write down everything that happened from Jesus' life to pass it on to the next generation. And as John is sitting there writing down the story of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection to pass on, he gets to this spot where he remembers that Jesus said that the Holy Spirit would both teach the disciples all things, and even 50 years later, would remind them of all that Jesus had said. You know, I wonder if John got chills right then and there, realizing that the Holy Spirit was working in him at that moment to remind him of what Jesus had said, to teach him all things, and to continue the ministry of Jesus through him. But guys, it's not just John. It's not just John. Verse 26 says that the Holy Spirit is doing the exact same thing in each of us if we believe in Jesus and follow him. The Holy Spirit is at work in your life and mine to remind us of what Jesus has taught us and to teach us how to live this new life that Jesus has won for us. The Holy Spirit continues the ministry of Jesus through us by reminding us of all that Jesus has taught us and by teaching us how to live on mission as his disciples. The Holy Spirit connects us to Jesus and God the Father, and then the Holy Spirit also continues the work of Jesus, continues the ministry of Jesus through us. And finally, the last point is this. If that's, if that's what the Holy Spirit does, if that's what the Holy Spirit does, if that's what the Holy Spirit is doing, then how should we respond? How do you and I respond to that? And here it is. We respond by listening we respond by listening to the leading of the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit is going to teach us how to live a new way of life, then we got to be listening for the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit's going to be a counselor, an advocate, and a teacher for us, well, then we have to listen for what he's telling us. If the Holy Spirit is going to teach us all things and remind us of all that Jesus has said, then guys, we got to listen for his voice. Jesus said that those who love him will obey his commands. But church, the reality is, the reality is, is that the only way that we are going to be able to obey Jesus' commands is through the power of the Holy Spirit in us. On our own, we're slaves to sin. But through the power of the Holy Spirit living in us, we have the strength to overcome sin and to live lives that are obedient to God that show our love of God by obeying what he has called us to do. And Jesus also said that we don't have to be troubled or afraid. Uh, but the only way that we can live without fear and anxiety is through the presence of the Holy Spirit living in us. On our own, it's so easy to give in to fear, so easy to give in to anxiety, so easy to give in to worry whenever life fails to go the way that we want. But when we have the presence of God living in us, through the Holy Spirit, then we can put our trust in him and experience the peace that only Jesus brings. But we have to be listening for the leading of the Holy Spirit. The only way that we can obediently follow Jesus and experience his peace is by listening for and following the leading of the Holy Spirit in our lives. You know, if we think back, I'm not going to throw it back up here, but if we think back to that chart that we had up on the screen a little bit earlier, there's one last thing, there's one last thing that I want to make sure you see. The only thing, the only thing that separates believers from the world is the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. The only thing that separates followers of Jesus from those who do not know him is the presence of the Holy Spirit. When we believe in Jesus, and, and, and here's what I mean. When we believe in Jesus and we choose to follow him, our sins are forgiven instantly. I'm not, I'm not saying that's not the case. When we believe in Jesus and we choose to follow him, our sins are forgiven instantly. We're saved and washed clean right then and there. Our salvation happens like that. But it's the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives that transforms our lives, that makes us holy, and that gives us the strength to live lives that are different than the world and pleasing to God. So we have to respond. It's imperative that we respond by listening for the leading of the Holy Spirit in our lives. All of life is learning. 
from the moment that we're born into the world, we're learning to do new things. But when we put our faith and trust in Jesus, we are born again into a new life. And the Holy Spirit is our counselor and teacher for that new way of life. He connects us with Jesus and God the Father, who reminds us of all that Jesus has said, and he teaches us all things. So will you listen for the leading of the Holy Spirit in your life? Will you trust Jesus and follow the leading of the Holy Spirit so that your life can be transformed and the mission of Jesus continued in your life? Would you stand and sing with us? God, you're so good.
know, as, as Pastor Daniel was talking about listening to the Holy Spirit, I think sometimes what we struggle with is that we have a hard time tuning into his voice. And what he said today is so true. The Holy Spirit has stuff he wants to teach us, friends. And so we've got to do our best as we're reading scripture to tune into what he's got to say as we're listening to podcasts or watching a, a teaching video to like listen to what the Holy Spirit's trying to, to teach us in that moment because he's got stuff he wants us to learn about him. Thank you, Daniel, for, for challenging us that way. Hey, friends, just a few announcements before we head out of here today. Uh, next Sunday, we're going to be honoring our graduates, our high school graduates during the worship service. So uh, we got a, a little time planned for you to honor you and recognize this great accomplishment in your life. Uh, so we're really, really excited to be able to do that next Sunday. The Flamingo Invasion is over. Uh, I'm telling you, friends, it was so fun to watch your posts on, on Facebook page and some of the comments you made. Thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting our student ministry in that regard. Uh, you guys helped us raise over $1,800 for our students. Yeah, that's really exciting. So to think about things like camp and our retreat this summer that you helped navigate the, some of that cost is really exciting. So thank you so much for jumping on board with that. Thank you for Pastor Daniel and his posse uh, for all of their trips around the greater Southwest Ohio area. I know that they spent a lot of time doing that. So good job, good job. Hey, this week at FCM, don't forget uh, Morning Devos, Tuesday at 9 a.m. on Facebook Live. On Wednesday at 9 a.m., we're doing something different this summer. We're not doing Bible study on Wednesdays, but we're going to do a coffee break. If you don't drink coffee, that's okay. You can still come. And basically what it is is just, just a time to gather around the table and talk about what you're learning. What is Jesus teaching you? Rather than looking at what we're going to do scripture-wise, what is it in your quiet time you're learning? And kind of process that together. So 9 o'clock, uh, we're going to meet in room 306, which is on the, the opposite end of the gym. Uh, a little more comfortable of a room in there. So 306 on Wednesday at 9 a.m. And then also don't forget our students here at 6.30 Wednesday night at, at that evening. Uh, vision team, hey, if you're on the vision team, don't forget we're meeting this Thursday at 7 o'clock. Just to remind you, you'll get some more information about that in your email box uh, this week. Uh, Pastor Lindsay will be joining us next week. She starts with us next Sunday. Yes, yeah, so we're really excited to bring her on board. And uh, she's jumping right in. So kids, next Sunday, FCM Kids is for you during the message time, all right? All right? Um, so yeah, so as we continue to work through this series, uh, The Ghost, we hope that there's some things that you learn about the Holy Spirit that you did not know before. And so this week, I would just challenge you this way. Listen. Listen. Try, try your best to drown Hi, out everything else. Choose the voice you'd like. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, Lord. Um, choose the voice. You don't want Jesus' voice to be like this, like, or more like, a, hey, it's okay. Uh, isn't just technology great? I mean, you know, last week, a power outage, and yeah. But seriously, though, listen to the Holy Spirit's voice and what he has for you as you search scripture this week. Listen to what he's got to you, that got to say to you. May the God of grace and the God of peace go with you as you go from this place. May he make his face shine upon you. May he remind you of his great love for you. And may you hear, may you hear what the Holy Spirit has to teach you this morning. You're dismissed as we worship this morning. Let's go.